that or not? Um, so the topic of, of this particular session is on spatial and industrial policy. And nowhere, I think these policies are reflected more in terms of the local government support to industrial uh, development in China. Uh, today, I will first talk a little bit about um, the background of the study. Uh, as John said, this arises from the series of uh, work on uh, manufacturing in low-income countries. Uh, I will also talk about the nature of the government support, which you will see that it varies from uh, locality to locality. Uh, the role of central versus local government, uh, in particular, the tailoring of government support to the business uh, life cycle, because each of the firms has a different, goes through different life cycles. So in the beginning stage, the needs are different from the development stage and different from the maturity stage. I will give some example if I have time. And at the same time, before you walk out here with all of the great ideas about uh, China industrial development, I think there's some uh, China exceptionalism, meaning some areas that may not be easy to replicate in other countries. And finally, I will uh, make some concluding remarks. The background, as I mentioned before, is uh, the series of uh, books. Uh, but in particular, for this book, for the uh, Tale from the Development Frontier, uh, it's based on uh, analytical surveys. Uh, it's based on uh, a lot of uh, interviews. We actually went over 15 cities and locality in China. We interviewed over 200 uh, enterprises and firms over a period of two years, from 2010 to 2012. The uh, sector that we cover uh, include apparel, leather products, wood products, metal products, and agribusiness. Well, we talk today about structural transformation. We, in, in, in this conference, we focus on structural transformation. And the role of the government is very critical to structural transformation. But, but if you look back in the past 40, 50 years in development economics, economists tend to have different views, tend to hold different views on what that role is. In the 60s and 70s, uh, we tended to, look, uh, to use the so-called big push, where um, development was assumed to come from uh, large investment by the public sector. But that led to um, the whole develop, development paradigm, uh, and that led to a lot of failure, a lot of uh, uh, indebtedness for developing countries in the 60s and 70s. Then in the 80s and 90s, uh, the pendulum swung to the other side, meaning we follow the uh, Washington consensus, leaving the market uh, forces to determine, uh, to guide development uh, of the economy. In practice, what you will see today is the Chinese approach tend to have uh, a mixed elements of both laissez-faire and dirigisme. And you will see how the mixture will, uh, will take place later on. Uh, on the nature of government support in China, the, in China, government support for enterprises in manufacturing cover the whole wide range of uh, activities of policy measures from fiscal incentives to hard and soft infrastructure. Now, the soft infra infrastructure refers to things like uh, advisory support on upgrading, knowledge spills over, through the establishment of enterprise association or um, of other uh, entities, improving managerial and worker skills, providing quality control, and assisting in building brand name. These policies vary by sub-national level, by region, and by locality. And they do not always involve government spending. For example, when the local government tried to introduce a uh, specific enterprises to the R&D uh, activities of the local government. 
that does not involve government spending at all, but it's still the work of the local government. And the nature of this support varied. So in general, it increases with the agglomeration of economic activities. That is, the bigger the cluster of activities, the greater the support. National policies usually establish the general direction and the pace of reforms, while most of the direct support for enterprises and for clusters is provided by the provincial and municipal government. And the government support also varies according to phases of the business life cycle. The role of central uh, and local government. The central government play a key role in reassuring the first generation of uh, private firms about the market directions uh, of reforms. But it also played a very important role in the 1994 fiscal reforms, whereby 60% uh, of the uh, taxes on enterprise, uh, of income tax on un enterprise profit, uh, shifted to the central government, and 40% uh, are allocated to the local government. In addition, the central government gradually implemented a performance system whereby um, the uh, promotion of local officials do not just depending on the membership of the party, but also on uh, GDP, on local GDP growth. Uh, and the promotion doesn't just depend on how well the region is doing. It also depends on how well the region is doing in relation to the other region. And that unleashes uh, the whole uh, fierce competition among local government in nurturing entrepreneurship and in attracting investment. Uh, by the early 1990s, the local governments behaved as if they were professional corporations. That's in the work of, of some um, uh, Chinese experts. The negative side of this is, of course, in the, uh, in the, in the course of competition, the local uh, governments compete in other, uh, try to, to, to raise GDP to the extent that it caused some, uh, uh, some, some damage to the environment. And I will come back to this point later on. Compared with the central government, the provincial government play a more active and specific role in the cluster development. They affect the formation and upgrading of clusters through two main instruments. The first one is through land allocation, and the second one is through cluster development, development planning. I will come back to that at the end of the discussion and show you some very specific example of how provincial government promote um, the clusters. Uh, municipal governments are directly connected to clusters which generally, uh, generally account for most of the economic activities in the village of Pau. Now, in this presentation, since this is a Western audience, I use the term municipal government in a very loose way, in a Western way, meaning it covers the local government below the provincial government. Okay, that's the typical way we understand public finance, for example, in uh, Canada or in, in, in the US. But the term in, in, in China means a different thing because municipal government in China usually refer to the local government at the level of large city like Beijing or Shanghai. Um, so to, uh, in, in China, what I call municipal government cover um, the, uh, the prefecture, the, uh, uh, the county, and the township. And below the township, there's also villages. These are what, what we call municipal government in, in the context of our presentation today. Um, what are the measures taken by local governments? The measures taken include three. The first one are the, um, the nurturing of clusters from the existing industrial base. So entrepreneurs build clusters. The government, the local government in this case, nurture them supporting the most profitable local industries. 
Um, they also build industrial park. So if local government target a specific industry, they build industrial park with good infrastructure and concentrate firms within the parks. So firms in these parks benefit from favorable policies on land acquisition, taxes, and duty drawbacks. Clusters usually expand very rapidly after the construction of industrial park. And the third way that local government can uh, promote clusters is through the creation of special platforms for specific industries. Okay? Here, this is because as firms develop from family workshops to model factories, they need soft infrastructure, such as new system of organization management, technological R&D, and market exploration. So local government often set up special platforms for specific industries. And toward the end of the discussion, I will also show uh, some specific uh, platform. But then the question arises, why local government? Why not uh, the central government? This is because in, in some countries, uh, the central government does everything from planning and developing strategic industries by mobilizing and allocating resources. And these efforts often fail. And that's just the term picking the cherry come from. Local government, in contrast, have fewer options. They cannot change the macroeconomic environment. They cannot build national monopolies. And they lack the uh, financial resources for building industries that are available for the central government. So as a result, local government has generally supported profitable firms that are already in business in local communities. So China experience at the local government level illustrates the case of backing the winners and not just picking the winners. A specific case of support is the tailoring of government support according to the business life cycle. Precisely because the intimate knowledge between the provincial, between the local government and the enterprise conditions, their support varies by the business cycle. In the startup phase, the government support is not much uh, significant. It's not any different than most of the uh, support that one sees in Africa, in other East Asian countries, uh, for example. But in the growth phase and the maturity phase, the government support is substantial and provide clear evidence that the government industrial policy is to help uh, promote the clusters. This is a, a, a crucial difference with the, uh, with the traditional uh, industrial policies in other countries. During the, the growth phase, the government support can be, and here I talk about local government support, can be divided into three types. The first one is the policies to facilitate production factors such as subsidies on land, credit, training programs. Second one is policy to create externality through industrial park or cluster developments. And the third one are policies to help set up the upstream and downstream activities to complete the value chain. There's other areas of intervention throughout the growth phase, including some of the one I mentioned here, and I, think, I, I, I don't think I have enough time to cover every one of them, but. They're so extensive, and again, they vary from locality to locality. So sometimes it makes me wonder if there is areas of, that, that the local government do not support. It's, it's as simple as that. There's just numerous, and there's just so many different ways, and uh, there's so many different modes of support. The support of, uh, during the maturity phase include um, uh, helping the enterprise to uh, get in touch with the research and development of the local university, networking, marketing, assisting through the uh, trading companies, and completing the value chains uh, through the upstream and downstream activities investment. So Chinese officials acting as a mesh makers connect firms with research agencies and consultants, and thereby reducing the cost of access to information. Um, I think there's a numerous example, and the book that 
In fact, at the end of the discussion, I will give you the website for the book, which you could get on, online for free. Uh, we give a lot of examples. Uh, we had something like uh, eight, uh, 18 different uh, cases of study where we go into very details of this uh, support. So I'm not going to um, go over uh, each and every one of them, but just, just to mention quickly that the um, that at the provincial uh, level, policies are to, to give the preferential tax treatment to key and high-tech uh, firm. So they identify design and implement cluster upgrading uh, strategy. The Guangdong province, for example, has a special list, and this is what you, you have. You have hardware industry in Shaoxiang, you have light, lighting uh, industry in Guzheng, you have wood and textile indus industry in Dailang, Ceramic in uh, Nanzhuang and shoe industry in Huangbu. So these are different upgrading strategy done by the provincial government. Uh, example of municipal support. In Igu meat product case, the local administration offer entrepreneurs low price land in the industrial park, subsidized interest on loans, and tax breaks. The local authorities also did upstream work with the farm workers by offering training in agricultural best practice. To boost agricultural activities in rural areas, the government offers subsidies to local farmers to who agree to dedicate their land to supply and agribusiness. So this enabled the scattered plots to be joined together into larger unit so that uh, it's uh, suitable for the large scale production of hogs and other agro uh, uh, products. In the case of the Wuhu, um, the government developed Chengdu into an industrial park with a complete supply chain that spans backward and forward links from the upstream shoemaking machinery and spare parts, leather and fabric, heels, sole, accessories, and other auxiliary materials to the downstream manufacturing uh, and distribution of shoes, such as design, R&D, logistic, and other services. So as I mentioned at the beginning, these activities are extensive, and they cover many, many different needs of the enterprise. I could uh, give you another example of the cluster support in which uh, the Wuhu district launched the brand enterprise base, it's called BB, uh, of the uh, Western Shoe Center of China Industrial Park to establish industrial platform for shoe material selection, for shoe buying and trade, for R&D, and international logistics for women's shoes. It actually uses 11 hectares of land inside the park to build facilities including international trade center, shoe material center, a logistic supermarket, a shoe technic and services center. At uh, 4,200 square feet, square meters, sorry, the international trade center is one of the largest in China for shoe product. To expand business further, the Wuhu government sent delegation to the leading footwear producing areas of Guangzhou, Guangzhou, and Guangzhou to learn from their experience. And it set out a guideline to encourage private firms to engage in R&D, brand naming production, and export. And it provides different uh, kind of uh, rewards for famous brands. So these are some of specific examples of the cluster support that you could find in the, in the book. So the question arises, how do local government finance on these activities, right? In the beginning, I mentioned about a 40% uh, share of the uh, income tax on, on enterprise profit. But there's also another source of uh, uh, financing for local government, and that is through the land deal. So for example, in the case of Guangzhou, uh, the municipal government finance to finance these activities uh, through land deal. Um, um, through the intervention of the municipal government, the state enterprises located in the city's central district sold their downtown land parcels 
and move their operations to suburban industrial park. The municipal government then resell these valuable plots to commercial developers. The relocated companies use the proceeds from the land sale to repay debt and upgrade technology. So the land deals are actually one very major source of financing for the local. Okay, so I think I'm going to about to finish. Uh, but before we walk away, I think we need to talk about uh, what I call China exceptionalism. Okay, one should remember that China has a very large domestic size, 1.4 billion uh, people, and no any other country in the world has that, that size. That size allows for huge economies of scales and fierce competition and facilitate the, the, the rapid completion of the value chain. Financing of local government is done through coercive large-scale land sale and leases, as I mentioned. So this is another example that few other countries can, can, can do. And China began with a labor force that was not only large, but also literate and well-educated. And China's large diaspora was an, indis an indispensable source of knowledge uh, about commerce, technology, and trade. Uh, and you still have a lot of Chinese coming from Hong Kong, from uh, Taiwan, um, and from um, all of these uh, areas in Southeast Asia, uh, bringing all the technology and trade and, and knowledge uh, to mainland China. China also has benefited from an unusual depth of entrepreneurial resources among the domestic citizens and overseas immigrants. So finally, let me conclude the, um, the presentation. Much of China's in the recent industrial success is, can be attributed to the facilitating role of the local and provincial government. China's successful industrial policy combined elements of both dirigis and laissez-faire. But these policies have not been, for, uh, have, been have, have not been particular for any area. In fact, they vary from locality to locality. And various policy approaches have been adopted depending on the local context and the particular stage of the firm development. So the goal is to guide the firm and the industry to become nationally competitive. Hence, the government plays a critical, a critical role in facilitating the creation of input and output markets around which the industrial value chains and clusters have evolved. Thank you very much. And here you could see the website. You could see the websites where you could obtain the book for free uh, online. Thank you. <laughs>